Hi everyone, this is Asaf Trafficant. Uh, in this short video, we'll go through all the Tag Hound features and capabilities so it will be easier for you to work with it and uh, understand when there is a, uh, maybe the extension maybe missed something or maybe you missed something or the website has uh, some kind of uh, uh, bad implementation. So let's go through all the features um, and how to work with the, with the extension for the best experience. So for the demo, I will use uh, several websites that you probably know. I will take a look at iHerb, uh, Levi's website, Walmart, Lego website, Skyscanner, sorry, and uh, Booking.com. Uh, each one of them has a different type of pixels and calls, etc. So um, let's start. First of all, when when you install the extension, you have this nice icon here, look like a target with the number. The number reflects how many events fired. So once you click the extension icon, you have this nice view of all the pixels that fired on this page. Please note that sometimes you won't see Google Tag Manager here, and it can happen in, in two cases. First one, this website has no Tag Manager installed. Second is that you toggled off the GTM tracking. So once you turn off the GTM tracking, it will stop collecting GTM events. So if you want to analyze Tag Manager, you need to make sure that it's enabled. Then the extension collects all the calls, let's say from the page load. So we can click the reload button again. And it will collect all the events from scratch and you'll see the number here running like 27 right now. Okay, so we have 17 Tag Manager, uh, let's call it events two Facebook calls, one Microsoft call, Pinterest, Reddit, Snap, TikTok, two calls for TikTok and Twitter. For each one of them, you will see the account ID or the pixel ID, what any kind of ID that reflects this ad network. Uh, we have for Tag Manager, we have two types of containers here for some reason. We have one Facebook pixel. So now all you have to do is to just open one of these calls and just see that Facebook, for example, because I'm looking at a specific product, we have uh, two events. We have the page view, which is the default pixel call, and we have view content, which is uh, similar to the view product event. Let's click on the view content and you'll see the e-commerce data, um, the, the, the currency, the value, the specific product data, event data. Uh, this is a product page. This is the currency. This is the um, category, etc. So for each network, there is a different parsing of the data. But as you can see, we have no GA4 installed on this website uh, on client side. So the extension shows nothing. It's a great opportunity now to tell you that if you if you see no events at all, like it's it's empty, you'll see maybe only tag manager event. You don't see any of your GA4, no Facebook pixel, etc. The main reason can be there are two reasons. The first reason is that you have some kind of an ad blocker. So I'm using a uh, uBlock origin. So let's turn on uBlock origin and reload the page and see how it impacts uh, the tracking. So we have zero, 11, let's see. Okay, so we see only tag manager event, we have nothing. So I got many, um, um, many support tickets saying that the extension is not working. And when the user send a, a, a kind of a, a screen recording, then I saw that uh, they have ad blockers. The second scenario is that they didn't give any tracking consent. So they have this GDPR uh, tracking consent pop up and they decline it or maybe they forgot they decline it. Uh, maybe they're debugging their own website and pixel are just not firing. So you need to make sure that you have consent for tracking and there is no ad blocker or something and only then the extension can work. So now let's see what we have on other websites. Let's go to booking.com. I click the icon and we have uh, Microsoft Pinterest and we have also Google Analytics, which is universal. It's the old one. Okay, it has some errors. This is why it's red. Let's go to uh, GA4. We have three events. We have user engagement, uh, navigation bar interaction, and page view. So we can click the navigation bar interaction and we'll see if there are any kind of parameters being sent. So we have index minus one, whatever these uh, custom dimensions uh, that booking.com are using. Uh, and you also have the Google consent mode, which is currently uh, on beta because it's kind of, uh, it, there is no official documentation about it. So uh, it might be, uh, broken in some cases and it changes, uh, but you can use it.
So this is one way to view the data. A second way is instead of clicking the extension icon is to open your developer tools, which is clicking the F12, uh, the function uh, button on your keyboard, and it will open down here and you'll see here this tab. Uh, this is my preferred view uh, because it doesn't disappear when you click some, somewhere on the page. Again, we'll see here all the tag manager event. You can see on the right side, all the, the parsing of all the data, Google Analytics, Floodlight, Google Ads conversion, you'll see the conversion label and ID. Each network says its own uh, events and its own parameters. Now, instead of looking at the events per network, you can see I want to group by event type. So you'll see all the page view events, all the other events, uh, all the conversion events. Okay, we have three Google Ads conversions. Let's, let's see uh, on Lego website, for example, F12, go here, let's reload the page. Okay, that's what we have. Let's go to Walmart website. Let's see what they have here. And basically that's it. Let's check Levi's website. Oh, let's check iHerb website. They always have a lot of pixels. Okay, so we have Pinterest and Reddit and Snap and TikTok, Twitter, Microsoft, Facebook and others. So let's click on the add to cart event and see what happens. So all the numbers uh, increased. So Pinterest, we have now two events. We have the page view and the add to cart, Reddit, uh, uh, page view, product view, and add to cart. So now you can group by event type. So you can take a look at all the add to cart events and you can even try to compare them, making sure that the currency is the same, that price is the same. If you see a red line, it means we have kind of a warning or an error. So for a TikTok, we have considering description parameter to add to cart events to support DPA. Amazing. You can set of group by, you can work to flat table, which takes all the data and flattens it. And you can even uh, sort based on the time to see which call takes the longest. So we have TikTok pixels takes one second, which is a lot. You can say, uh, you can filter, you can filter based on the event type, show me only the add to cart. I don't care about the others. Per network. And maybe you want to filter based on whatever, only one network. You can click only and see only Twitter. All the errors on this page are uh, accumulated here under the errors. So you can click one of these and it will take you directly to the specific event. You can click the reload to reload the page. You can click the clear button here so it will clear all the data being collected by the extension. And there's this record functionality, which I'll go through in a second. So we have two ways to view the, the events. You can click here on the, this icon. It's empty because I cleared it and you have the dev tools, but you can also work on the on-screen toast messaging, which is this red beacon right here. So let me close the dev tools. Let me open here. So it will show you this nice toolbar and it will show you each time that something is happening on the screen, which cause an event to be fired, you'll see it here. So we have some tag manager events once you do something here. So you can click on it and you'll see the information on the left side. And you can change uh, the configuration and the appearance of these toast messages. You can pause it for a while. You can uh, send it to the left side of the screen instead of the right side. You can clear it. It's a very easy way to, uh, let's click that to cart and you'll see a lot of events right here. So let's say TikTok and you have Snap and Pinterest and maybe Google Analytics, but not on this side. And you can turn it off. So before again going to the recording, let's. Um, uh, I want to show you something else. Uh, we have this sleep button. Sleep button literally uh, hibernates the extension, so it stops from working. Cross tabs, cross the browser until you wake it up again. This nice face emoji is the support. Uh, I, I urge you to send me uh, um, uh, tickets, uh, requests, feature requests, bugs, whatever you're finding. The more details is, is better, like screenshots, videos, etc. 
uh, plus your email so I can reach you back and uh, uh, maybe the, investigate this, uh, these issues uh, better. And we have this cog icon which will take you to the option screen. So this option screen includes the track GTM um, default state. Uh, if you're using a different data layer name, this is the this is where you need to change it. Uh, it will always track the data layer uh, with this name, but if you have another data layer of, of, for a certain website, whatever, data layer, data layer 5, you can use it. It will keep analyzing the default data layer regardless. Now, some domains, some websites are using or uh, firing tremendous amount of events and pixel literally bloating uh, tag manager data layer and it might cause the extension to get heavy on the browser memory so what i suggest is that if you have several websites like this you can add them to the exclusion list here so it will they will not be tracked at all in addition uh, there is a features that improving your uh, google tag manager tag assistant okay it will add some on-screen colors and stuff, tags with error, fire, tag that fire multiple times, it will sort the tags. Um, I just urge you to preview a container, a tag manager container, and see how the extension improved the visualization. If you don't want it to, to, uh, to be like this, you can just turn it off. Okay, now let's go through the record feature. The record feature means that once activated, it will record all of your clicks and events that fired on this uh, page. But it also keeps it the recording uh, when you move cross pages, maybe cross domains. And once they stop the recording, you'll see all the results in one section. It's very beneficial when you have uh, events that fire very fast during transition uh, from page A to page B, for example. So you don't have a time to, to see it. It happens in a, in a millisecond. So how it works? it will start to record only when you click the record. So whatever happened, already happened here, it will not be in the uh, recording output. So click the record. If you want to measure this again, you need to reload the page. Okay, and let's, I don't know, like add to the bag, add to cart. Let's click the review bag. And now we can go to the extension and we can stop the recording and it will open the results in a new tab. Now you can play with the tab as much as you can play with the extension itself. It means you can filter and do everything here, but you can also export it to a CSV. You have the information about the website that you're just recording and the, and the time zone and the time. Uh, and as you can see, we have like two pages and under each page, you'll see all the events that fired. So we have the product page and we have the cart page that we just uh, transitioned into. And you can export to CSV and keep it. And you can open it in, in Excel or something and, and see the results. So this is it. Uh, the extension supports Chrome and you can also find it on uh, Microsoft Edge browser uh, store if you want to. Um, this is the list of the all supported networks. If you think there is um, something that is crucial for you, you can ping me and ask to, to another network to be included. New and networks and analytics tools are added based on the popularity of the tool. And feel free to reach me for any kind of support and question. I urge you to do it by clicking here. Thank you very much and enjoy debugging.